next guest is a best-selling author and parenting expert who has been counseling teens for over 30 years. Today, he's counseling us on how to enrich our path to better health by strengthening relationships with our families. I know I need to hear it. Please welcome back Mark Gregston. <laughs> welcome back, Mark. Good to be here. Good to be here with you guys. Always, Always great. Here. By the way, when we're not sitting here on the sofas in front of all of you, we're still asking him questions and trying to <laughs> yeah, get all the information yeah. we can whenever we get to sit down with you. We've all asked him to move in with us I know. for a few weeks at a time. It would be helpful. I don't think it's too much. There you go. No, you've, you've got uh, teens that need you as well. Now, we're coming out of the holidays, of course. Yeah. And I think uh, for many of us, holidays really bring families together. But now we're coming right. out of that time. And that closeness kind of starts to fade. So you say that there's some things that we can stop doing that actually, like they were doing, that push our children away. Yeah. So, what yeah, would you yeah, say yeah. That is? Well, there's something about the holidays that are fun. I mean, it, I mean, you're all sitting around watching Hallmark movies, <laughs> and you're celebrating. You're doing all this different yeah. stuff, and I mean, everybody's calm and easy. They're on their, you know, they're on, on the best stage to try to do as much as they can. Yeah. And then you come out of that, you know, and you're going, okay, I. I, I want to keep this going. Well, the, the real world begins to hit, and you've got to correct your kids. You've got to yeah. say things to them. You've got to tell them things that, that, okay, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. And I think what happens is we need to quit correcting all the time and start connecting. Mm -hmm. You know, that the tendency over the Christmas holidays is that you, you kind of let everything happen. Right. It, it it's kind of a matter. magical time, yeah. and you get away with things. Yeah. You're like, oh, you're yeah, so yeah, cute yeah. when you do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But it's right. not going to last. Okay, good. I mean, it's an, it's an unreal world. It's not going to last. You come out of that. And I tell people all the time, quit trying to correct everything. Right. I mean, when, when you do that, then what that does is just push somebody away. Nobody likes to be corrected all the time. If you walked in here every day and everybody told you all the things you were doing wrong, well, you'd go, I want to be somewhere else. Yeah. Right. And so I, I think the same thing happens with our kids. So for you and me, I think it's engaging differently. And it's saying, you know, I, I, I want to engage in such a way that draws them to me rather than pushing them away. And we right. get into this, this habit of, of, of wanting to correct, which is the role that we have to do as a parent, mm -hmm. but we don't have to do it all the time. And when the tendency is that I'm going to just correct all the time, tell somebody what they're doing wrong, how they need to do it better, and what they need to do different, older kids go, I don't want to have anything to do with so it. So how do you yeah. reframe it? How do you, how do you well, change the well, way you bring that up? Well, right. you quit correcting. Change the words. I, that's right. It's changing a little bit because, okay. you know, the tendency. I mean, I live with 35 high school girls. I mean, I mean, they at a residential counseling center. And so I put up with them all the time. They're wonderful kids. The younger girls, I spend most of my time, if they're not wearing the right thing, I'll go, hey, can we just... Talk about what you're wearing because maybe it's not appropriate. Okay. okay. I ask Bring if I can in. do that instead of just going, you need to change that because you look right. awful. Yeah. And then the second part of that, the older girls, it may be just be saying, I don't need to correct everything. If I spent all my time correcting kids, I would have no time to develop a relationship. Mm. So it's much more important for me to make the connection rather than mm. pushing the correction. Yeah, make the connection, stuff. not the correction. Yeah. That is great. That is yeah. a great take. You also talk a lot about being a parent versus being a friend, especially when the kids start to get older. Yeah, yeah. You know, when they get into their high school years, we, we start to lose them a little bit. And so we go, hey, I'm going to quit doing this parent thing and I'm going to start doing this friend thing. Well, let me tell you something. Your kids don't want another friend. They want a parent. What a parent has to do is shift their parenting style to not only enforce the rules and say, here's the consequences for violating this, here's the boundaries of our home, but engaging in such a way that, that it's strong enough that you can say, I still love you and it's this. It's, it's both and. It's right. not either or. But when parents stoop, they're, they're eliminating their, their most important role. So yeah. I tell people all the time is that when you're called to be a parent, don't stoop to be a friend. You have an important role, but you're the unique person and the only one that can have that role in the life of your child. That's really good yeah. stuff. Something I don't actually, yeah. you know, I don't think I've heard anywhere else. Yeah. That's super so helpful. Good. You also talk about how obviously it's important to praise our kids when they're doing well. But then again, coming back to connection, how important it is to stay connected through the tough times. And you've got a oh, great yeah, yeah. suggestion that with things that we can do, it's actually a little bit of a lost art, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, I think what we do is, is pull this out and we always send messages off of these things. Yeah. And, and, and quite honestly, I don't have to put any effort. I can say anything to anybody by texting or emailing anything. Send a card. I mean, go, go get right. one of those Hallmark cards that, that has a message to it that I have to spend some time and invest something in to trying to find the right message with the right image to convey something. So all I have to write is, 
love dad. <laughs> Listen, we have plenty of those around here. It's the we best. Can help people out. Look at yeah, on that note, true. Hallmark's Just Because cards are that's the right. perfect card to write a yeah. little loving yep. message and leave in school lunches or yeah. backpacks, Aww, leave around the house. A great idea, just Cam. like you say, it's so it's so good. We're we're very fortunate here, Deb, aren't I we? Know. No, to have access, true. and you know, obviously you can get them at the stores too. So. I'm gonna start putting that in Alexandra's lunch. There that's a go. really great idea because yeah. I always I write on a napkin, but you know what? Hallmark well, when I get <laughs> something that's written, it's far different than when I get a text. It means something. Somebody put some effort out into it. And, and kids need to know about the investment that we have in relationships. And that yeah. means that I'm going to do something different. I'm going to engage differently. Do you know some of the most successful people I know in this business still write handwritten thank you cards to people? It's impressive. Yeah. yeah. It means a lot. It is. Yeah. Honestly, I've received more handwritten thank you cards from Barbara Walters than wow. anyone else. And I mean, think about someone who's super busy. I mean, it's a big deal. Wow. So we talk a lot about connecting with our children, but what about connecting with our parents as they age? That's equally as important. Well, and, and, and it's probably even harder yeah. because because I think we have a sense of disappointment. A lot of us do that our parents weren't what we really wanted them to be. And so I tell people all the time, then be to your parents who you had hoped they would have been to you. I mean, it, it just means that there's disappointment, which means my kids are going to be disappointed in me that I didn't fulfill all their expectations at the same time. So in some way, it, it's, it's loving them through it and, and keeping that connection. I mean, it, it's a life well lived and they need to be honored in, in so many different ways yeah. and resolve the conflict because if you don't resolve the conflicts that have come up over a lifetime, it, it wears you out not them. And so engage differently, but move toward them like you wish somebody would have moved toward you. Yeah. That's the way to, to, in a sense, heal some of those wounds yeah. if you weren't happy with them. I mean, it's such a great way, in, yeah, yeah. in a sense, to reframe the past, too, by doing that. You also talk about how important it is to listen in our family relationships. <laughs> listen to understand, not listen yeah. so that we can respond right. and jump back in there. Tell us about it. Well, it's like right now, I can spend most of my time thinking about what my response, rather than what you just asked me. Right. And so I'm so concerned about my response, I'm yeah. not really hearing your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, the first 12 years of a kid's life, you know, they need to listen to us. But the next 12 years, we need to be listening to them. Wow. I mean, nobody listens anymore. And if there's one thing that we can do better as parents, is listen to our kids, try to get the, the heartbeat of where they are, what they're thinking, mm -hmm. what, what's going through their head, what's really on their heart, and how to engage with them differently. Because when we touch their heart, that, what, that is what keeps the relationship growing and growing and growing. That may be the most important thing you could do for your kids. So first 12 years, uh, they have to listen to us. Next 12, I'm yeah. in the second half. You're in the first half. Well, I'm working on her listening Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, good luck I'm with that. I'm trying every day, Mark. We're very grateful uh, to have you visit it's us. It's good to be here. And, and we're, I mean, Thanks. just so much great wisdom there, everybody. Uh, Mark's most recent book, Raising Teens in a Contrary Culture, is available now wherever books are sold. Check it out, everybody. For more information, go to heartlightministries.org.